Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look into Bonanno mobster Lefty Ruggiero. His origins trace back to the gritty streets of Hell's Kitchen, Manhattan, where he entered the world on April 19, 1926. Growing up in the vibrant Knickerbocker Village private housing development, nestled in the heart of Little Italy, he was raised by his hard-working parents. His father, Fury Ruggiero, spent his days as a truck driver, while his mother, Frances, dutifully embraced her role as a housewife. Ruggiero shared his childhood with two younger siblings, Dominic and Angelina, fostering a tight-knit family bond. From a young age, Ruggiero gravitated towards the allure of the Bonanno family organization. Eager to prove himself, he embarked on his journey as a street soldier under the wing of Captain Michael Sabella. Ruggiero swiftly found success in various illicit activities such as bookmaking, extortion, and loan sharking, honing his skills within the underground world. Finding a sense of camaraderie within his chosen lifestyle, Ruggiero resided in an apartment on Monroe Street, coincidentally sharing the building with his trusted friend and fellow Bonanno soldier, Anthony Mira. Legends circulated about Ruggiero's ownership of a cigarette boat, moored along the banks of the East River in New York City, symbolizing his affinity for a life outside the conventional boundaries. As fate would have it, Ruggiero forged profound friendships with two significant individuals who would shape his future. The first was Philip Rusty Rustelli, a Bonanno captain who would later ascend to the position of family boss. The second was a Bonanno soldier and informant, Anthony Mira with whom Ruggiero shared countless exploits and secrets. Venturing beyond the confines of organized crime, Ruggiero seized an opportunity to become a part owner of a fishery within the bustling Fulton fish market. This vested interest granted him an intriguing advantage, he secured a no-show job, raking in a substantial $5,000 per month without lifting a finger. In the 1970s, he further expanded his holdings by acquiring a social club in the vibrant neighborhood of Little Italy, establishing himself as a notable figure within the community. Around the time Ruggiero earned his stripes as a maid member in the Bonanno family, a pivotal introduction occurred. Anthony Mira introduced Ruggiero to Joseph Pistone, an undercover FBI agent operating under the guise of Donnie Brasco, an expert jewel thief. Initially assigned to infiltrate truck hijacking and fencing rings, Pistone's unexpected friendships with Mira and Ruggiero provided the FBI with an invaluable opportunity to penetrate the mafia's inner workings. Under Ruggiero's wing, Brasco began working alongside him, handling bets and assisting in the collection of funds for the bookmaking operation housed within Ruggiero's esteemed social club. Impressed by Brasco's dedication and loyalty, Ruggiero assumed the role of mentor, ultimately pledging to sponsor him for membership within the family. Their bond deepened, straining the relationship between Ruggiero and Mira, who had initially introduced Brasco to Ruggiero. Signifying the strength of their connection, Brasco served as Ruggiero's best man when he tied the knot in 1977. Moreover, Ruggiero relied on Brasco's guidance to navigate the challenges of his son Tommy's battle with heroin addiction, recognizing Brasco's invaluable support in times of need. An almost precarious situation occurred when Ruggiero came close to uncovering Brasco's true identity. Dining together at a Miami Beach restaurant, Ruggiero stumbled upon an article in Time magazine detailing the infamous Abscam scandal, which involved FBI agents posing as wealthy Arab businessmen to expose bribery within Congress. Ruggiero's attention was captured by a photograph featuring a white yacht, the left hand, which he recognized as the same vessel Brasco had provided months prior for a gathering. Skillfully, Brasco convinced Ruggiero that he had no knowledge of the boat's true affiliation with the FBI. During a previous criminal venture, Ruggiero encountered Frank Balistrieri, the influential mafia boss from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ruggiero confided in Peastone, expressing a sense of unease and vulnerability in the presence of Balistrieri. In 1979, Ruggiero transformed his social club into a candy store, entrusting its management to one of his daughters. Simultaneously, Ruggiero and Brasco embarked on a joint bookmaking operation within the establishment. However, Ruggiero's inability to meet the initial required investment of $25,000 led to his eventual exclusion from the partnership. Following the assassination of Bonanno boss Carmen Galante in 1979, a power struggle ensued, leaving a void within the family hierarchy. Philip Rostelli emerged as the leader, operating the organization from behind prison bars. However, dissent brewed within the ranks, spearheaded by Alphonse Sonny Red Indelicato and his faction, challenging Rostelli's authority. During this tumultuous period, Ruggiero aligned himself with Dominic Sonny Black Napolitano, a staunch supporter of Rustelli. On the fateful day of May 5, 1981, Indelicato and two other rebellious captains, Philip Giacone and Dominic Trinchera, were cunningly enticed to a meeting, 
only to meet a tragic end. Their deaths effectively quelled the rebellion against Rustelli's leadership. According to Peastone's account, the perpetrators behind the murders included Napolitano, John Sersani, Joe Massino, Sal Vitali, Joseph Di Simone, Gerlando Sciascia, Nicolas Santora, Vito Rizzuto, Luigi Giangetti, and Santo Giordano. Ruggiero and Sersani assumed the role of lookouts during the grim event and were subsequently tasked with cleaning up the aftermath and disposing of the bodies, alongside Napolitano, James Episcopia, and Robert Capozio. Ruggiero reveled in his life as a mobster, embracing the freedom it offered him. In a candid moment with Peastone, he articulated the allure, explaining how being a wise guy granted him the ability to deceive, cheat, steal, and manipulate without consequence. It was a life where he could operate with impunity, immune to criticism or reproach. Ruggiero embodied the archetypal wise guy, earning the respect of his fellow mobsters. While he had a reputation as a skilled and dangerous killer, he generally avoided unnecessary violence in his daily interactions. Remarkably, Ruggiero had managed to evade imprisonment throughout his criminal career, despite being arrested on numerous occasions. He had mastered the art of navigating the legal system and staying one step ahead of the law. Ruggiero's unique nickname, Lefty, originated from his distinctive style of tossing dice with his left hand while playing craps. Additionally, he acquired the moniker Two Guns due to his preference for wielding dual firearms when carrying out hits. During the 1970s, Ruggiero developed a significant gambling addiction, particularly focused on horse racing. His obsession with betting led to substantial losses, prompting him to borrow money from Nicolas Marangello to cover his debts. By 1977, Ruggiero found himself owing Marangello a staggering $160,000. The Bonanno family made it clear that he would have to repay this debt before he could achieve the esteemed status of a made man within the organization. Ruggiero diligently worked to settle his obligations, making considerable progress in reducing the debt. Eventually, the family officially accepted him into their ranks in 1977. However, Ruggiero's gambling troubles resurfaced in 1978, once again indebting him to Marangello. To resolve the situation, the family arranged for a direct transfer of revenues from a portion of Ruggiero's criminal enterprises to Marangello, effectively satisfying the outstanding debt. Constantly attempting to conceal his limited assets from creditors like Marangello and Sabella, Ruggiero navigated a delicate balancing act due to his gambling compulsion. The culmination of the Donnie Brasco operation arrived on July 26, 1981. FBI agents paid a visit to Napolitano's residence atop the Motion Lounge, revealing Brasco's true identity. Once the Bonanno leadership became aware of the deception, they swiftly sought retribution against those responsible for bringing Brasco into their inner circle. Tragically, Mira and Napolitano met their demise in the aftermath. On August 29, 1981, Ruggiero was intercepted and apprehended by the FBI. In November 1982, Ruggiero, alongside Santora, Tomasulo, and Rabito, faced a six-week jury trial, resulting in convictions for racketeering conspiracy. The court imposed a 15-year prison sentence on Ruggiero. Refusing to accept the truth that Brasco was an undercover FBI agent and not a trusted associate, Ruggiero maintained his loyalty, stating to his lawyer that Brasco would never betray them. However, when Pistone testified against him, Ruggiero expressed his resolve, vowing, I'll get that motherfucker Donnie if it's the last thing I do. In April 1993, Ruggiero, grappling with lung and testicular cancer, was granted release from prison after serving nearly 11 years of his sentence. Unfortunately, his health continued to deteriorate, leading to his passing on November 24, 1994. The portrayal of Benjamin Ruggiero in the 1997 film Donnie Brasco immortalized his character, with the talented Al Pacino bringing him to life on the screen. Additionally, Ruggiero's granddaughter, Ramona Rizzo, made appearances on the VH1 TV show Mob Wives, further connecting the family's legacy to popular culture. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.